like you can. In Jesus' name. Broken heart. This curse. Sit For the word of God in the same. Spending, I want you to go over and help three people today. Just tell them you won't leave you like you came in Jesus' name. You won't leave you.
somebody, somebody, and tell them I know you. Yeah.
And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Lust at first. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give thee a tent unto thee. I want to talk to you this morning just briefly about Jacob's vow. Come on and say Jacob's vow. Some glad morning when this life is over. Jacob's vow 
vows, uh, promises, uh, covenants that one make with God. Uh, vows are different from God's covenant. Covenant normally is initiated by God and what God promised to do. But when we vow, we initiate it. And uh, the thing about most of us who make vows and promises to God is normally generated by some consequence of a as a result of something we need, uh, some crisis that we find ourselves in. And we tell God, if you do dust and so for me, then I'll do so much for you. Strange thing that you can talk to God and confess to Him. And if you really mean it, you do it by faith. God will honor uh, the contract. And because really that's kind of what it is. Uh, we make a contract. Um, what generated uh, Jacob to make this vow to God. Uh, most of us are familiar with uh, Jacob's situation. He found himself away from home, uh, out in the wilderness, and uh, had nowhere to lay his head but a rock. And the heavens was his canopy. And you wonder how do you get in that situation? Uh, well, you know the story, Jacob was the younger brother of Esau. He was twin and he came out last. And uh, Jacob was one that stayed around home. He saw his older brother was a hunter. And they were different, they were born different. Uh, he was an outdoorsman. Uh, he favored the outdoors. He had hair on him uh, like an animal. And he had uh, the instinct. He knew how to hunt. Uh, and his Father uh, promised a blessing if he would go and get some of the venison that he normally got. His dad, eyes had gotten old and eyes were dim and ready to go. And before he went, he had the privilege of blessing the oldest son. First of all, the older son had a birthright that was legally his by birth. Uh -huh. Then the daddy also had a blessing. And uh, Jacob's name, they say, meant supplanter. And so he, um, he was tricky. But Esau sold his birthright. Sometimes we sell out to the enemy. Uh oh. Uh, he had been out and was hungry, came home and almost faint. And so he sold his birthright to his brother for some need. Uh oh. Sometimes we make a deal with the enemy and give up 
But if you've got God on your side, we should have the testimony, for God I live and for God I die. And don't make deals with the enemy. And God will bring you out. But Esau uh, sold his birthright for a little pottage to eat. It's a, something to overcome the flesh. And that's what he was doing is satisfying the flesh. And, uh, but here we have uh, Jacob uh, who was around home and he took the advantage and so bought his brother's birthright. Not only did he buy the birthright, but uh, after the day that was old, eyes was dim, mama around the house. She loved Jacob because he was the baby. Uh oh. And something about mama, they loved them babies. Uh oh. And she heard the, the daddy. And when he's told the older son, I want you to go up. My time is short, I want to bless you. But I want you to go first and get me some of that venison that you, I love. You know what I love. And he got his bow and his arrow and his quipper and went out into the woods to hunt. But that mama around the house and she wanted baby to be blessed. behind every action you take. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes I know we do things when uh, we're in sin, but uh, everything you do, every sin you do, it carries a consequence. And even though God forgive us for our sins, the consequence is still there. That's true. Uh, and a great big old example of that if you go out and father a child. Uh oh. Why are you in sin? And you come to the altar and get forgiveness. God forgive us for the sin. But you have a consequence. You still got that child to raise. Right. Let me look up on you. <laughs> Care how you dance and how you come out, Amen. Uh, you still have to bear the consequence. Right. That mother uh, encouraged her son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She go out into the yard out there and get a couple of them kid goats. Uh -huh. And I know how your daddy like it. Uh -huh. I done rubbed his head before. Uh -huh. <laughs> Know what he done? Y'all looking at me? Uh, go ahead, Pastor. Teach. That's right. And, and you, the baby, you. In other words, what she was saying, you need the blessing. Yes, right. And so, uh, let, let him bless you. The boy had some sense. He said, "Mama, I don't even smell like Esau. Mm -hmm. uh, my hands are not hairy like Esau. I don't have his voice." She said, son, just listen to me. Go out there and get uh, I, I, I know what it takes. Uh, and uh, she fixed up those goats and fixed that venison up just like the dead of Lily. And, and told him, she said, now go and get some of these old clothes out there. And then took the hides and covered his skin yeah. on his hand. Because the new daddy was going to feed it when they got there. And say, now take it on in uh, to your daddy. Yes. And uh, they took it in to Papa. Yes. Papa wanted to know how that you was, you 
got this venison so fast. Yeah, yeah. I've known you. In other words, what he was saying, I've known you go hunt before and you hunt all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here you are coming back already. Yeah. And uh, you say, how is it? And say, yeah, but I got it, Daddy. I got it right here. And then he said, nah, you, you don't sound like you so. He said, come here, let me feel you. And he put his arm out there where that fur was on his arm. He said, but you don't smell like him. You don't sound like him. You sound like Jacob. But he went on and they fooled him and they blessed Jacob. And when he saw Cain, he got, he got the blessing, but it had a consequence. Sometimes we do crooked things to be blessed in the church. But you got the consequence to live with it. Uh -oh. And he received a blessing from his daddy. But when he came, when Esau came from the field and found out what had gone on, and he vowed them himself. That I'm going to get Jacob. And uh, Jacob's mama found out that Esau wasn't playing. So she had to get him out the house. And the reason Jacob was out in the wilderness was because he had to leave home. They had a family crisis there. Something else when children grow up and get ready to leave home. And sometimes we ask ourselves the question, is it time for him to go? Is he ready to leave? Have you prepared him to leave? And will he survive when he leave? All these questions came to my mind. And she, I know she wonder if we'll fail our child. And uh, she made me want to start over and do it over again, but it was too late. And then I guess Mama had to say we just have to leave him in the hands of the Lord. Because my baby has got to go. If he don't go, his only brother don't kill him. It was a trying day. Yes. Yes. She had to let it go. She said, now, nah, I'll tell you what I do. He need to find a wife, and he don't need one of these Canaanites. So she went to the daddy and said, let's send him to my brother. And then let, let, let him find a wife over there. He said, he don't need to be with these Canaanite women. She cooked up a scheme to get him out of the house. And she put Jacob, said, go on to my uncle. And Jacob started out and had no body to go with him. Out in the wilderness, the heavens was his canopy. And no pillar to lay his head on. Tell you, if you've never been alone out there, uh, sin can get you out there in it. You don't know what to do. It was a sad occasion for Jacob. And it was sin that had thirsted him out. Had to leave his home. Sin caused the prodigal son to leave home. Sin which caused Adam to be cast out of the garden. It was sin who caused Cain to murder his brother. It's a hostile world. And here he was, out by himself. Never been out in the woods before. He was not a hunter like his brother. But he was there by himself. And here Jacob is, 
the dew falling on him. Afraid to go back home, knowing his brother was trying to catch it. And they were all along by himself, feeling that he had lost contact with even heaven. But I want you to know that God had something to do with it. Uh oh. God had said to him when they were in the womb, this is two nations we have here. And even though they're struggling in the womb, he let that mama know this is this is gonna be two great nations that we have here. And God works in mysterious ways. And sometimes his wonders is too performed. We don't understand what God has done and how God is going to do it. And I'm sure Jacob felt that God was nowhere in it. Yeah, he was out there by himself in the wilderness with the animals and the bears and whatever was out there. All along by himself. Feeling that God, he had forsaken God also. But while he was there lying with his head on a rock for his pillow. Yeah, he, he got a message from glory. So you don't understand God. And he had this vision. He saw a ladder that extended from heaven. And over in the night, he saw angels ascending and descending on the ladder. Woke up this early that morning and just concluded that I heard from heaven. And even though my brother is after me, but I just heard from heaven. And since I heard from heaven, this place is going to be called the gates of heaven. And we're going to call it Bethel. I've been wondering where in the world did he get the awe from? Maybe some of you theologians can tell me. But early that morning he had all the anointing all. And he anointed that rock. The Bible said he poured all on the rock. Uh -oh. And he said, This place shall be called the house of God. In other words, I can't stay here right now. But one of these days, I'm coming back to this place. And this is going to be a place where we worship God. It's going to be a place where people can come and find deliverance. I know that I've been crafted and I, I, I know my name means for parents. But I also know that God is using me. First night from home. Never been from home before. In the barren wilderness. Frightened along by myself. He was fearful. Looking for the footsteps of his brother Esau. Who was out to kill him. Looked at that rock he had anointed for his pillar. Looking up in the sky, nothing but the star. And there, sleeping, seeing that great big ladder coming down and saying, This is the gates of heaven. I want you to know that God can use anybody. And Jacob was so glad. That the Lord had forgotten me. He said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a covenant with God. When God blesses you. And bring you out. You ought to want to make a covenant with him. And Jacob said, I'm going to vow a vow here. And I'm going to keep my vow. And Jacob said, now God, if you will keep. 
I, I, I know I'm on my way to my uncle's house. I don't know what I'm going to find. But if you would keep me in the way that I go. Not worried about mom and daddy anymore. But I just want you to keep me. If you keep me, I'll be all right. I'm going to finish. And in that vow, he said, if you would give me bread to eat. Uh -huh. And just give me my clothes to put on. And make it so I can come back to my father's house in peace. Not just come back, but come back in peace. Then the Lord, you shall be my God. And he made God a promise. You see, when you make God a promise, you need to keep your promise. He said, and this stone, which I have set for my pillow, it shall be God's house. And all that you give me, I will surely give thee the tenth part. You see, Jacob didn't know how God was going to bless him. And he blessed him in a numerous way. Yes. He had plenty money. Yes. He had plenty cattle when he got there. Yes. But he had promised God that I'm going to give you the tenth part yes. of everything that I have. Yes. Come on and say yes. yes. And after he made that promise to God, the Bible said he proceeded on his journey. Yes and made his way home to Laban's house where he found love and prosperity and was successful. Come on and say yeah. I want to say to you today, when you make a vow to the Lord, you shouldn't take it back. You ought to tell him, Lord, help me keep my vow. Come on and say yeah. yeah. Tell the Lord yeah. yeah. God, God will make a way for you. Yeah. He'll open doors for you. Yeah. Yes, he will. Yeah. He'll be bread in the starving land. Yeah. He'll be water in dry places. Yeah. Yes, he will. Yeah. Afraid of his brother Esau, not knowing what was going to happen. He knew he had cheated him out of everything he wanted. He didn't realize, look at somebody say payday is coming after a while. He had terror that his brother Esau had a hundred men that were coming after him. Thank you, Jesus. He wasn't a coward, but he was ready to get it. But he knew one thing, that the Lord was on his side. He had the assurance that God was on his side. And this is what I want you to go away with. If you got the assurance that the Lord is on your side, then every 